So tell me what brought you to this. What made you feel like, I love this so much, this project? Uh, the fact that they asked me, uh, I think initially was really exciting to me. Um, when I got the script for the first librarian movie, I was still doing ER and up to my knees and blood and guts, and I thought it would be more fun to spend my summer doing something lighter in tone. And uh, having always been a big fan of action, adventure, comedies, and, and those franchises, I jumped at the chance and had so much fun playing this character and working with this creative team that um, when the audience turned out and they did very nicely yeah. for TNT, we made a second and made a third, and hopefully we'll keep on making them. Yeah, I was going to ask, is this something you're going to keep going? I hope so. I mean, it's all predicated on whether or not the audience turns out to view it, but uh, assuming that they do and that it's successful, I would very much like to do as many of these as we can. When you talked about how to do all this drama for ER, which is what a lot of people are used to saying, it was so fun to see you be comedic, and it seems like you have a lot of fun doing that. I do. Is it something that, you know, you really look forward to waking up and you go have fun all day? Yeah, it's a bit coming full circle. I, you know, if you go back and look at some of the early seasons of ER, I was used mostly as comic relief. You know, the dramatic storylines were funneled through Anthony Edwards and George Clooney and Eric LaSalle and Sherry Springfield and Juliana Margulies, and I was the guy carrying the tray of piss through the background that was tripping on himself. Yeah. Uh, and then as those characters left, uh, the character of John Carter became more of a vehicle to tell some of those more dramatic storylines. And we kind of got away from, from the more comedic elements of his personality. So to get to do that stuff is really fun for me. I, 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 I like a good pratfall now and again. And to get to go to work and, and figure out, is it funnier this way or is it funnier this way? Or maybe if you did this or if I did this is the kind of uh, creative discussion I really flourish in. What about all this um, action adventure stuff and the stunts and the sword fighting? Well, that's where it's nice to be a producer because it's not so much having to acquire new skills as getting to tailor storylines around your already existing ones. <laughs> so having done a little horseback riding and a little fencing and a little of this and a little of that, um, those become the catalysts for these set pieces and storylines that um, are really, really fun to do. I mean, I can't think of another character that I'd ever get to play where... I get to ride horses through the deserts of Africa, or mm -hmm. climb through the jungles of Mexico, or pull a skiff through the swamps of Louisiana. Yeah, it's pretty great. And tell me, I heard that you have some good stories. You did the sword fighting because you had fenced growing up. We did the sword fighting because we couldn't afford this other chase sequence that was actually scripted, where I get chased <laughs> through the English countryside uh, oh. like a fox hunt, and then I jump into a Mini Cooper and lead him on a high speed chase and jump over a truck and all this other stuff and we looked at our budget and went right well that's not going to happen <laughs> uh, how about a sword fight that sounds uh, good yeah sounds good to me but the painting was my idea it was yeah it's the best part and tell me about you know, is, with the special effects like with the Excalibur sword was that, that stuff's fun for me really? I must have a little mime hidden in me somewhere because I really enjoy pretending that something is uh, is attacking me when there actually isn't maybe it's more of a paranoid thing I have but uh <laughs> Uh, green screen can be tricky. Green screen is not a skill set I necessarily bring to the table, pretending that I'm aware of, because we don't really know. We don't know until after the fact what, right. what relics are going to be seen in the background. So uh, you don't know if it's going to be a UFO or the Loch Ness Monster or a time machine or a unicorn or whatever it's going to be. So you're sort of having to play something very general, but the sword fight is something very specific. You know, you know that if you do this, then someone's going to have to paint the sword right. jabbing you in the arm. And you get to sort of dictate the choreography as opposed to the other way around. Now, are you a big history buff, archaeology buff? Yeah, I am. That's what brought you to it, probably? Well, it's a, yeah, added incentive gravy. So are you like telling people what you know or are you learning as you go or...? A bit of both, a bit of both. I mean, I, anything that's referenced in the movies gives me an opportunity to do research and continue an education in, in, in areas where I probably wouldn't have uh, otherwise. And, and inversely, areas of interest of mine can uh, turn into potential storylines.